Dear Chavari, and I'll, and I'll begin uh, on that point. We have come a long way. It's an argument that uh, Mick Antonov uh, also uh, made, and certainly when it comes to Clause 11, we certainly started off in a very dodgy uh, station on this particular journey, and there's no doubt that as the journey uh, moved on, um, uh, we moved to a better place. But I cannot feel any other way than to see that the government has decided to get off this train just as it's parked on the top of a cliff. And I would rather be continuing now to see how much further we could be going on this journey. And it may well be that the clock uh, is... It may well be that the clock is, is against us, but we do see, uh, whatever your thoughts on what's happening in Scotland, there is a relevance in that the Finance Minister for Wales uh, sat alongside a Scottish Parliament, as a par uh, Scottish Minister as part of these negotiations, and they, uh, with the support of Labour, of course, in Scotland, have decided to continue to fight. I would rather we were uh, continuing to try to make a stand to protect Wales' interests, because you're right, we don't agree uh, that uh, we have got the best deal possible for Wales. What happened um, to make the Labour Finance Minister change his mind so fundamentally last week? I'm still not, not sure, uh, because we know that that uh, change of mind happened in a very short period of time. What we do know, though, is that the climb down, as, as we see it, will have long-term implications for devolution and for Wales. Government was defiant to the last minute. Would you accept a sunset clause? No, it's a matter of principle. Give us a real assurance. Give us real assurances that only when consent is given here in Wales can UK ministers make regulations uh, in areas devolved uh, to uh, Wales. Um, what we have now, though, bizarrely, bizarrely, is an agreement that UK ministers uh, can legislate in devolved areas once a consent decision has been made, because a consent decision could include a rejection uh, of consent. And that is something that our uh, lawyers again uh, confirm to us this afternoon. It may be a point on which we disagree, but that is our uh, analysis of what that, uh, what that means. Um, picking up on, on what uh, David Rees uh, said, um, that we somehow are a continuing project fear. I'll remind you of the project fear that was related to the European referendum in the eyes of, uh, of some of the you know, Scottish referendum. We're not objecting to UK frameworks here. We're not object objecting to UK frameworks and the need to work pan-UK on a number of issues. We simply believe that those frameworks should be uh, the result of uh, working consensually and collaboratively across these islands. And we think that what we have in this agreement that the other parties in the Assembly are about to sign up to um, are a threat to devolution. I'll very quickly pay a tribute, if I can, to Stefan Lewis uh, for giving us the seeds of the continuity bill. Um, that today, I think, should be forming the basis of a continued stand to protect uh, Welsh uh, interests. It's thanks to that that the negotiations were, I think, able uh, to go on uh, as long as they, they did. Devolution is still young. Neither processes nor events uh, can happen uh, overnight. And, you know, I know, as many of us here know, that devolution still has its enemies. We here have all been trusted to nurture Welsh democracy and not to bow to pressure or underhand UK uh, government tactics uh, to give it away. And you may have a limitless trust in UK government, but we here feel that Wales deserves a more cautious approach uh, on uh, that front, and so did you on the Labour benches until very, very recently. But also, we think we need a bolder approach in terms of protecting Wales's interests. So you know, let's stand up and be counted and support our motion today. Thank you. The proposal is